Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Kickstart Specialist Finance Webcast with myself, Nicola Firth from Knowledge Bank and Joe Breeden from Crystal. So kicking off this week, then, we have had 92 criteria changes last week. That's down from 147 the previous week. So we've definitely seen a little bit of a slowdown. So, so this has been for the, consecutively for the last three weeks now. Um, and we, we perhaps think that, that everybody's just in limbo. Nothing's, nothing's getting worse, but nothing's getting better. Um, and, and lenders seem to just be hunkering down at the minute and just seeing how, how the, the changes, the raft of changes they make play out. So, uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely a slowdown there. Um, a lot of the news this week was around the stamp duty holiday announcement. And we'll come on to that later. Uh, and also, unfortunately, more lenders did pull their 90% LTV products. Again, I'll, uh, I'll go into that, that in a little bit of detail as well. Uh, and also, we saw further tightening from big lenders on the treatment of bonus, overtime, commission, and uh, adverse credit as well. So just to go through those uh, changes in detail, so Accord, they've temporarily reduced their maximum LTV for first time buyers uh, to 85%. You remember Accord did the, they, they brought out first time buyers at 90% LTV. And um, th again, they just came out last week and said that they've just been absolutely swamped with business. So, so there's only so much one lender can take, unfortunately. Um, and while they're the, out there on their own doing it, so it does need uh, it does need everyone else to come to that party, definitely. Um, Coventry Intermediaries, they've um, extended the use of their electronic valuations for both residential and buy to let purchases, um, remortgages, and further advances as well. So where cases don't meet the criteria for the electronic valuation, they will still instruct a physical valuation. So Halifax, quite a few changes from, from Halifax. They've reduced the allowable proportion of bonus commission and overtime that can be used in their affordability assessment from 60% down to 30%. So that's quite, um, quite a, a jump really. But Halifax has said that for certain self-employed cases, where a review by their underwriters is not deemed necessary. The additional requirements to obtain three months supporting bank statements will no longer be required. So that's a, that's a positive. Um, and they've also said that the majority of their contractor cases will no longer require a review by underwriters. So again, that's, uh, that's another sort of uh, little concession, I guess, uh, there from Halifax as well. So moving on then to NatWest. So NatWest has updated their, uh, their furlough evidence that they require for, uh, from mortgage applicants. And they've told brokers now they can no longer offer cases or escalations on any applications within service level agreements. Um, so they said they made the changes to furlough guidance as borrowers were returning to their jobs after previously being furloughed. And the updated, updated guidance is effective immediately and covers evidence the types of evidence required to support new applications at each stage of the customer's return to work post furlough. Um, so there are no changes for customers not impacted by furlough or those that are self-employed. Um, so obviously we're seeing July isn't the first change to the furlough scheme and whatever, so we see that phased out um, you know, proportionately month on month up to October. So, so those changes are made in anticipation of that. Uh, Principality, they will now calculate affordability for self-employed applicants by taking the average of the most two recent year's figures or the latest year if that's lower. So the affordability on their website, uh, the calculator is not being amended to reflect this change. So you need to, to bear that in mind and calculate it for, uh, for self-employed applicants with affordability. So, so just bear that in mind that the affordability calculator on their website isn't going to reflect that. So you just need to do that. So that's the, the uh, average of the most recent two years figures or the latest year if it's lower. So that's for principality. Uh, Virgin Money will no longer accept cases where a counterfeit judgment or defaulted account remains on a customer's credit file, whether satisfied or unsatisfied. Uh, and they'll no longer accept cases where there have been two or more consecutive missed payments on any item of credit in the last six months. So just a few uh, changes there to, to adverse credit from Virgin. Uh, so moving on, Al Ryan Bank, they are reintroducing their 90% and 95% finance to value home purchase plan. Uh, the Examy Bank, they're hoping uh, the return of the plan will offer more first time buyers with as little as 5% deposit 
the opportunity to get on the property ladder. Um, so, so if you remember, Al Ryan put a temporary pause on their home finance products above 85% finance to value due to the coronavirus and, and the lockdown and everything. That's, that's when they did that. Uh, so they've relaunched the product and it'll be initially available to customers based in England um, in the form of either a two year or a five year fixed uh, rate HPP. So that is Al Ryan Bank. Buckinghamshire Building Society have added the option of an AVM to their family assist mortgage range. So that's uh, that's great. A little bit more option there. And Ipswich Building Society, they withdrew all of their buy-to-let products, including expat buy-to-let and holiday mortgages. We do see this quite a lot. This is not even, even necessarily a reflection on what's going on in the market. We see this quite often from building societies that get to a certain point in the year and they've, they've just met their quota for lending, so they, they do just pull back. Um, and then Norton Home Loans have made some uh, changes to their right to buy uh, product range. So they'll now allow customers to add 100% of the lender and broker fees on top of the 100% discounted price, uh, which is fantastic, extremely generous. Um, so this alongside their, alongside their standard criteria, such as offering a maximum loan of £75,000, uh, but they can do more on referral, so it's always worth um, picking the phone up to them, and allowing up to four applicants on the mortgage in a maximum term of 25 years. Um, so some good stuff in there and talking of good stuff. So the stamp duty holiday was announced uh, by the Chancellor Rishi Sunak uh, in his summer statement last week and the changes were to come into effect immediately and last until the 31st of March next year. I think that was so key that that because there was there was talk at one stage about announcing that the changes but them not coming into effect until the autumn um, and thank goodness he, he, he sort of did that with immediate effect, effect and actually as of midnight that night as well because that could have caused unnecessary stall in, in the in the market which of course we uh, we wouldn't have wanted at all people delaying completions uh, so as part of the changes, the level at which the taxes charge has been temporarily raised from £125,000 to £500,000. Um, so hopefully giving a, a bit of a boost to the property market. Um, and the, so the changes that apply, whether you're buying your first home or have owned property before. So this is not specifically for first time buyers. Um, anybody can utilise this. And from our understanding, it is also applicable on buy to lets however that's just the purchase of the buy to let the additional three percent stamp duty because it's um a second property is still payable so it's not um it, it's not entirely uh, they're just saving the one percent the three percent is still payable but still it's a good positive move and uh, we've certainly heard that um, brokers have been getting a lot more inquiries because of course the deposit situation is one thing but allowing people to save the stamp duty they can use that money then towards um, a, a paying a little bit higher deposit levels. So that's it from me. So I am going to pass on over to um, to Joe now, and um, and you, Joe, you'll talk, give some uh, some uh, yep. information on the market and things that you've seen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely correct. Um, I get very, very. Um, I guess what you're you're seeing in the, in, in the primer market, sort of what we're seeing in the uh, in the specialist market. You know, there really wasn't that much. Uh, change criteria wise last week um, it 's probably the quietest week we had on that front. It almost felt like the lenders had actually actually uh, finally had a bit of a holiday and stopped playing a bit bit of the Okokoki so getting read around deal flow and, and understanding really where pipeline appetite um, what w was like, where where that 's at I think was really important to us over the last sort of three or four weeks i think we 're still struggling on the uh, the commercial market we had lloyd 's uh, commercial announced last week that the you know, they're only uh, going to look at commercial uh, property transactions for existing Lloyd's customers um, for the foreseeable future. Again, you know, putting the onus back on, 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 on the fact they're inundated with C-bills applications. So that's uh, the commercial market still hasn't really shown any, 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 any signs of significant improvement just yet. But, but again, you know, this thing's a movable feast. We were talking about it internally. Who, who, who would have lent on a, on, a, on, a, on a pub two weeks ago? And yet last week, you know, all, all we're seeing is that they're in a data with people here, there and everywhere. So, you know, you, you probably would do this week. So it's a moving feast. Um, and I think what we need to do now is sort of get to the end of the summer and, and see the benefits of all this stamp duty change and, and, and how that can build our pipeline. So in terms of deals, um, really, um, and, and, and I'll conclude this with, uh, with, with our hero lender of the week. You know, it was a standout week for, for one lender in particular, um, uh, Crystal. Um, on the new business side, 
we had a customer that needed an, urch- an urgent auction bridge, um, but they also wanted a guaranteed exit. So we approached Shawbrook Bank um, with regards to the purchase of these 16 flats that the customer had successfully won at auction, having put 10% down. His deposit was, uh, you know, not a significant amount of remuneration. So he's looking for 75% against the purchase price of 2.8 million pounds and the exit. And what we, you know, we, we were we were happily uh, able to structure a, a deal with Shawbrook Bank, uh, credit approved, um, um, exit terms as well onto a long-term buy to let um, MUFB uh, product with those guys there. So, you know. Really pulling out the stops and getting the pre-application credit approval process there from Shawbrook uh, on on an auction purchase. So not only have we got the one app in, we've also got the takeout secured with those guys as well. So well done to the the, the team at Shawbrook and Gavin C Home for overseeing that transaction. I did of the week again Shawbrook Bank. Um, we had a really urgent purchase of a semi-commercial property. Again, semi-commercial. We see we've seen fluctuating appetite around semi-commercial and, and, and the treatment of the income does it does you know as an investment um unit a lot of lenders in the challenger bank space just want to rely on the rent from the residential element and ignore the you know the shop element which we found quite infuriating as you know convenience stores have, have traded all the way through this period but Shawbrook have had a common sense approach to that they allow you to look at the investment income from the ground floor commercial um, we had an urgent um sitting tenant purchase um for a semi-commercial property it's only a tiddler, 100k purchase price, needed a 75% loan. Um, we, we needed to complete it for today. Um, we had a little bit of delays around the valuation um, and actually find that value it could, it could turn around the report in the, in, in the required time frames. But you know, happily, uh, you know, we're happy, happy to announce that we got the value out on Monday, inspected on Wednesday, got us back the report on Thursday, and um, we've had the request of funds come through today at a rate of 6.69 on the 100k purchase price so well done Shawbrook and for that reason they get my hero lender of the week um, despite being under the cosh um, with the fact that they seem to be the only commercial lender that has a, has a significant appetite for business currently um, so the rest SLA, of SLAs are suffering uh, the sales team there have, have, have come on leaps and bounds over the last six six months particularly in supporting brokers and, and updating them with where, where pipelines you know where the pipeline's at and pushing urgent tra- transactions to the top of the workflow queue for underwriters as well so you know the the bdms at shawbrook have been a testament i think over the last um 12 weeks particularly for my business um, and managing expectations so well done to the guys there and, and well done for being the shining light on the commercial property um, in the pro- commercial properties lending space um, um, currently, and I can't see that changing over the next 12 weeks at least. That's it for me, really. Pretty uneventful. <laughs> uneventful, but Shawbrook sound like they've really come up trumps. That's fantastic. Amazing. Amazing. That really I can't, is. Yeah, yeah. From where they were a year ago, Nick, as well, I can't explain how yeah. poor their service was, really, and, and, and the products were out of out of kilter to now being really the only lender actively looking to lend in that commercial property space. Um, and, and, and they're actually getting the service levels bang on. So um, hats off to the guys there. Absolutely. Just shows you, doesn't it, how they, how they can change things around. I mean, we've seen that with other lenders in the past. I mean, I, I'm going back a bit, but I remember Accord. Um, they, you know, during the whole credit crunch, Accord were terrible, absolutely mm. terrible. And you avoided putting business to them at all costs. And then if you look now in, in the residential space, certainly on the high loans value stuff, they, they've been a bit of a hero with the 90% loan to value, supporting first time buyers. I know they've had to make that change this week, but you know how our lenders change change. It's great, isn't it? Absolutely. It's really good. It's really good. And, 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 and I think this time, you know, people will, um, remember the lenders that have supported them during this period. You know, again, we've talked about it in previous shows about how other lenders withdrawal and quite blunt, um, bluntness with regards to the treatment of pipeline and customers in that pipeline i think will will mark a lot of you know intermediaries moving forwards you know certainly as in our business we, we absolutely have undergone a panel review and we've had quite a few off there as a result of it so right yeah people like shawbrook i think you know hats off to those guys and, and we'll absolutely remember them coming out of this yeah, no, that is brilliant, brilliant. And as I said, I think the stamp duty changes for the market as a whole, um, certainly the residential market, I think that's, uh, and, and possibly the buy to let market as well, because there was some confusion, wasn't there, when uh, Rishi Sunak announced that last week. The, the first question was, 
what about vitalettes what does that yeah. mean and um i suspected it included vitalettes because it didn't explicitly say residential and uh you know that they, they said buying that normally they'd term it for the public buying their own home wouldn't they and he didn't so 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 even that's the that's a positive for the vitalette market yes the three percent still there but still the saving of one percent is it's a saving isn't it that's it. That's it. You know, it can be up to 15 grand. So, so, you know, it's, it's a difference maker that is that's all your fees and costs and, and, and everything else rolled into the transaction. So, um, yeah. you know, great, great work there from, from a chancellor on that. And I'm sure that, you know, there'll be more and more incentives. You know, we still haven't had that announcement on, on help to buy renewal. I mean, that's got to happen. I know we keep talking about it every, every week, but that's got to happen. Um, look, I think considering that this is unprecedented, the government are, are doing all they can do really. And now, and now let's hope as an industry we can we can work with them to get a bit more prompt innovation and and and, and do a bit of a f fill some of the gaps that there still are in the marketplace. Yeah, that'd be great to see. Well, I think um, from our point of view, I think that's a pretty much a roundup of everything. Which was a particularly quiet week, actually. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions, but if you have, um, if you just stick them in the box and and we'll answer. Um, what where we are now so we're coming to the middle of july and uh, things do seem to have quietened down we've got some holidays uh, people on holidays so, so we are going to take a break um of the summer break for uh, for this um webcast aren't we joe so we we, will, uh, we what we'll say is we will um we will be back uh, at the end of the summer however um shall we say that if anything dramatic happens if something you know i yeah. don't know if we end up having another landslide of criteria changes like we've had before, we'll we'll hop back on, shall we, and, uh, and give yeah. us a out because that's uh, so we're not going forever. It's just over the summer while things do quiet off because they, we've seen week on week it's got quieter, hasn't it? And lenders seem to be holding off making changes because we're we're waiting to see, aren't we? What is going to happen? I think they're sort of waiting for the furlough piece to sort of play out now. You know, yeah. in, 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 in my opinion. So so you know what we want to do is is add value to all of you guys, and I think you know, that positivity piece is, is you know, is, is key to us. And talking about 99 criteria changes and one lender being a hero, you know, yeah. that doesn't really float my boat here, really. So I think, it's you know, not. absolutely, let's, <laughs> let's, put it, let's, put it, let's put it on hold um, and, and, and add some more value when we get back. Right. a few more lender heroes. We have just had one question, Joe, actually, from uh, Aliyah. Uh, do, t do lenders tend to want three months bank statements uh, back on full... Um, so, sorry, do, do lenders tend to want three months pay slips back on full salary or just one month after being on furlough? It's probably one for you. Jo. I mean, I could look that up on Noise Bank, but I'll pass to you, Joe, on that one. Yeah, I think I think from what we're seeing, as long as we can get confirmation, from, like a written letter confirmation from the employer confirming they're back off furlough, they're okay with the one month. You know, I, I, think, I think bank statements, as we talked about again in other previous shows, are the key to all this. So, you know, lenders are definitely, definitely looking more scrupulously at bank statements and lenders that weren't asking for bank statements before all this are now asking for it. So what you don't want to see is any hardship, but I think, you know, there, there is an element of common sense uh, along with a, an employer confirmation of that, that, that individual's return to work. Yeah. I was going to say the only thing that would make sense because obviously if you're back at work, you're back at work and they want to see what you've gone back on. Uh, the only thing I've seen like is that um, they are wanting still three months bank statements for bonus overtime and commission. So they're, yeah. they're wanting to see that trend there. So I think I think just for using standard salary, I think it's fine. But I think bonus over time and commission, I think that's where they're still wanting the three months. Is that what is that what you've seen as well, Joe? Yeah, a, th a thousand percent, a thousand percent. You know, they still just build a case in point and talk about plausibility on every single one of your application. Use those additional notes boxes when you dip in dip in deals in with with, with whatever lender, because lenders will be asking for bank statements and they will be going through them with a, a fine tooth comb. So just make sure. You, you know, you're adding as many notes as you can to support that 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 customer's application. Brilliant. All right. And I think that's it. I do, oh, hang on. No, hold on a second. Uh, another question uh, from Alaya again. Um, which okay, so which lenders will lend higher than four point four nine times salary? <sighs> yeah, I mean. That, <laughs> You split this not down many. Two, I was going to say, you can split this down into two questions, can't you, Joe? Which lenders will and which, which lenders say they will? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, and, and again, it just depends on the circumstances. So, so, you know, we had a package exclusive launch with, with Foundation last week where they're particularly looking at mortgage prisoners where they won't, 
Um, I mean, we yet to have an application go through them. We've got a couple in the pipeline, you know, but it's not got to advanced stage where they're saying that they will ignore income multiples and income assessments where they're um, pound found refinance, where we're actually moving the customer into a cheaper monthly rate. So they'll, they'll look at the bank statements to see that the, you know, he's paying £700 a month. He's now going to pay £600 a month as a result of our transaction and then ignore that, 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 that income multiple. Um, you know, again, working alongside the, the FCA um, and guidance on helping out mortgage prisoners where income potentially isn't at the level that the current market needs it to be. So, so, so foundation, t- you know, definitely, definitely, if it's a pound pound refinance, we'll look at that on their, on, on their packet exclusive. I don't want to sing too much about that until we actually get one deliver. Um, because yeah. we've had these, you know, we've had these schemes before where they look great, um, but the reality is it's typically different. I, I, I would just say that on that on that four point four nine, you, you are kind of stuck. But what you have got more so is you know, the likes of Precise um, looking a bit more creatively, creatively about retained profits, um, self-employed dividends, etc. Where you know, potentially we can get to the 4.49, but it's not just on a single income source, you know, it's multiple income source driven, but I, th- I think you're kind of stuck there to be honest, to be honest with you. Yeah. yeah, for the time being. No, absolutely. And uh, and actually you said about mortgage prisoners, so that was something we saw last week, wasn't it? So the FCA asking for brokers if, to see if they want to be on the register to deal with mortgage prisoners. And um, that's quite an interesting one, really. Um, here at Knowledge Bank, we were involved quite heavily in the mortgage prisoners um, and the whole thing, seeing what could be done with the FCA. And we, we were sat on their panel. And uh, I think the opportunity is, is relatively small, isn't it? I think that's the... Yeah. Uh, you know that's the thing so and and we don't know what additional compliance and of course now you've got the, the the affordability side of things as well that's going to be different so uh so but yeah if if brokers are interested in that i mean you can go to the sea's website and uh, and have a look and, and see if you want to be on their on their list of approved brokers to deal with that so that's if, if you are looking at getting other business in um somehow but the opportunity is not massive is it i think it's something I think when, when we were sort of, uh, so it was last September, I think, that we were the last... 10,000, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, it's relatively small, relatively small. I think I think they estimated it was going to be like sort of 200,000. And, and oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and on the, what I saw on their paper was 170. So, so if you think nationally, that is quite small, isn't it, really? So um, Yeah, it is. It is. But, yeah. look, you know, it's, it's great that the, the foundation have tried to innovate and, and, and hopefully meet a bit of demand there. Um, yeah. again I'm loath to endorse it too much until I see delivery and, and, and it all pans out yeah, I agree I agree I think that's it then I, I think I don't think we've got any more questions just check no I think that is it from everybody so uh, thank you everybody um, obviously if you have any questions or queries um, obviously give Joe or myself a shout uh, or any of the guys at Crystal or Knowledge Bank and we'll always uh, try and help and uh, we will look forward to seeing you um, the other side of the summer or before yeah. if something crazy happens. So yeah, we'll complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enjoy your summer. All right. Thanks, Joe. Stay See positive. You See you guys. See you. Bye.